Okay, welcome everybody, welcome. Uh, Phil just said to me, this is a little bit like class at the University of Michigan. Everybody stands in the back. But uh, once I get up to speak, they usually quiet down, so this is a good sign. I want to welcome you all to this reception of the Armenian Studies program marking our 30th anniversary. The 30th anniversary of the establishment of the Alex Manukin Chair of Modern Armenian History. When you think about the founding of this program, the founding of that chair, four names come immediately to mind. First of all, the principal benefactor, without whom none of this would have been possible, Alex Manukyan, for whom the first chair is named. One should include here his wonderful wife, the namesake of the second Manukyan chair, Marie Manukyan. Right behind Mr. Manukyan, one should also mention the dynamo that inspired the chair, kept pushing, reminding him always that this was going to happen. An indomitable Michigan patriot Mrs. Alice Haidostia. The negotiations that led to that first chair needed someone within the university who was determined that Armenian studies would come to this university in a serious and sustained way. And that was the tireless chairman of the Slavic Languages and Literature Department, the late Ben Stoltz, and we remember him fondly. Shuttling among these various people, going with me and Alice to innumerable lunches and dinners, was a superb, nuanced, erudite ambassador, the man I have referred to often as Mr. Manukian's Minister of Culture, Mr. Edmund Azadian, who's with us. That was the quartet that made this program possible and that found an obscure professor of Russian history at Oberlin College and invited him and his wife to Ann Arbor in the fall of 1977 to teach the first course in Armenian history. The road to today was not an easy one always. At first, the Department of History, where the first chair would be seated, was somewhat suspicious about Armenian history, particularly modern Armenian history. Would we really take the money if some Tibetan came and wanted Tibetan history? After all, most scholarship, if you think back, at that time had been on Armenia's ancient and medieval past, not the story of the last several centuries. Remember that the views and opinions about Armenia in those days, this was the Cold War, after all, were sharply divided between anti-Soviet nationalists on the one hand, who did not even acknowledge that there was a state of Armenia, and on the other hand, those who wondered about it but sort of accommodated themselves to it. Yes, there might be an Armenia, perhaps not the ideal one that we would have wished for, but one that did exist precariously within the Soviet Union, on the border of Turkey, indeed on the border between the Soviet bloc and the self-styled free world. The persistence of Mrs. Haidostian, Mr. Azadjan, and Professor Stoltz, and the generosity and vision of Mr. Alex Manukyan overcame eventually whatever resistance to establishing a chair in modern Armenian history lingered in Ann Arbor. And in 1981, I was invited to become the first Manukyan professor. Now, coming to Ann Arbor, all I had to do was learn modern Armenian history or more accurately, in a way, to start inventing it, because there was hardly any scholarship out there. There was the redoubtable Richard Hovenisian in Southern California, so we had some beginnings, Louise Nalbanyan and others. But in general, very little. There was one book on Soviet Armenia. There were a few studies of the genocide, most of them deeply partisan, and certainly not based on reliable sources. There were few colleagues doing serious work. So writing those lectures in those early years was something like archaeology, digging deep to find bits and shards of evidence 
that could be linked together in some kind of coherent story. But luckily, I soon discovered there were others out there doing similar things. Hovhannisian was training some graduate students, among them one who would become a lifelong friend, colleague, collaborator, and I can say comrade, Girard, Gerard Liberidian, the current holder of the modern Armenian chair. I met around that time Khachik Tololyan, Kevok Bardakshan, and realized that yes, there were people to work with and talk with who were breaking new ground in thinking about the Armenian revolutionary movement, modern Armenian literature, and looking at original ways into the history of the diaspora. I met Susan Patty, who's with us tonight, already a graduate student here at Michigan, working with anthropologist Aram Yengoyan. And as a member of her dissertation committee, I brashly claimed her as the first graduate in the not yet established Armenian Studies program. So we're celebrating this 30th anniversary of the founding of that first professorship. But the, re the program itself has no actual founding date. I'm a historian, after all, so dates are important. Even before I arrived here, there was Jim Derian, later Sonia Harlan, teaching the Armenian language at Michigan. There was Dikran Kulumjan, Tumajan, carrying the torch at Wayne State University. So you can ask, how was this program actually founded? Well, and I'm saying this in front of deans and provosts, but I'm a historian and one has to admit this, sort of accidentally, sort of conspiratorially, I simply decided one day to have a page put in the catalog, we used to have paper catalogs in those days, about this new program. I never asked a dean or a provost or even a department chair. I just did it. So if Jira and Kevork have not actually gone ahead and given us some legal standing, unless you've rectified my anarchist act, we are only semi-legal even today. But as you can see, what really matters is the reality of a program, not its formal beginning. Whatever the humble beginnings of this program, it flourished. We have seen, imagine this, thousands of students, literally thousands of students, go through our courses. We have trained graduate students in Armenian, Russian, and Georgian history. And today we have one student working on Armenian women in the 1920s, Jeremy Johnson, he's here with us today. Another on ethnic minorities in Azerbaijan in the 1950s. Another on the social and uh, ethnic ecology of Eastern Anatolia, what we call historic Armenia, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The University of Michigan has at the moment, I can say without hesitation, the strongest Armenian studies program in the United States. With two professors working directly in the field and several others, Catherine Babayan and I would include myself, engage in topics that are closely connected with Armenia, the Caucasus, Persia, Turkey, etc. We have postdoctoral fellows, we have visiting scholars, we have fellowships for graduate students. We ran a summer language uh, program in Armenia for many years, and Michigan, I'm very proud of this, is the current home of one of the most successful intellectual and in a way political projects in the field of Armenian and modern Turkish studies, the so-called WATS, or Workshop on Armenian and Turkish Scholarship. In the year 2000, along with my Michigan colleague Fatma Mugye Gürcek, who's here, uh, Girard uh, uh, Liberidian, Kevork Bardakshan, Stephanie Platz, and others, we organized the first meeting, which brought together Turkish, Armenian, Kurdish, German, French, American, and other scholars to discuss, of all things, the genocide of 1915. This was unheard of. People were frightened about this. Many wouldn't come. We had the first meeting in Chicago, the second in Michigan, and eventually came together with a kind of consensus about those events, creating a dialogue that continues today in this country, in Europe, and in Turkey itself. We're having our next conference a week from now in Amsterdam. The best papers of that process came together and were published by Oxford University Press this year in a book called A Question of Genocide, Armenians and Turks, at the end of the Ottoman Empire. If you're interested, we're gonna present that book on November 3rd at the Bentley Library here in Michigan. So you see a lot has been done in these 30 years. 
None of it would have been possible without the work of the chairholders, the donors, the staff at Michigan, people like the Haidostians, the Poles, the Vapurchians, Bob Borgramian, Martin and Diane Shushanyan, the uh, Keolians, the Sarkisians, the Armains, Richard and uh, Louise Manukian. I have to mention people like Marisha Ostafan, Ingrid Peterson, and I could go on and on and all. I'm thanking you all for coming here today. Thank you for bringing me here 30 years ago. The students at Oberlin in those years, that was the years of the Vietnam War, were yelling, USA, out of Vietnam. And under my breath, I was thinking, SUNY, out of Ohio. <laughs> and Mr. Manukian, Mr. Manukian and the Manukian family are the ones who made this possible. So I am eternally grateful. My first introduction is our provost, Phil Hanlon, the executive vice president, the provost for academic affairs at the University of Michigan. He's assumed this position in July of this year. He's also, if that's not enough, the Donald J. Lewis Professor of Mathematics and an Arthur F. Thornow Professor. He's been here at Michigan since 1986. He's held leadership positions all over the university. He's helped to develop academic uh, programs here, been interested in budgetary matters, and he still man manages a career, I won't say on the side, as a mathematician focusing on probability and com combinatorics with applications to bioinformatics and theoretical computer science. Whatever that is, he's obviously a very smart man, and I invite him to speak to us. Well, Ron, thank you for that kind introduction. And uh, you are right, much has changed on campus over the last 30 years, but some things have remained the same. One being that chairs and faculty all over campus continue to commit anarchic acts without checking with the dean and provost. So that has remained the same. Uh, so it's, I'm really uh, delighted to see so many friends of the program here tonight. And uh, very, I'm very pleased and honored to be able to share this special event with you. Um, I want to start by extending my thanks to the Manugian family uh, for their kind generosity over the years, um, and I'm really delighted that Richard was able to join us tonight. Uh, certainly their ongoing investments in the vision of uh, Richard and Louise's parents have shaped this program in very, very powerful ways. Um, it was also a special treat to meet Alice tonight because uh, I have worked with and admired her daughter for so many years, so it was great to meet you, Alice. Um, so Armenian studies, uh, it's, it's added distinction to our educational and scholarly programs now for 30 years. Uh, as provost, I, I especially appreciate the uh, educational contributions it makes with undergraduate and graduate courses that range from introductions in the field to courses where students can develop deep expertise. And many of these are interdisciplinary. They draw from the fields of literature and history and politics. In addition, I know that the faculty in Armenian Studies have created a thriving research enterprise on campus. And again, the generosity of the Manukian family has been key here. Their chairs have allowed us to attract uh, key scholars like Ron to our campus to lead this effort. And also to, has provided funding to uh, allow for frequent visitors, which is also really important if you want to have a thriving uh, research program. Um, I do also want to mention that the Armenian Studies program has leveraged other assets on our campus, and uh, I would point to a productive partnership between Armenian Studies here on the Ann Arbor campus and the Armenian Research Center in the uh, U of M Dearborn. And also, the Armenian Studies program uh, benefits from, from and is buttressed by the, the holdings of the U of M library, which are quite distinctive, and these include uh, microfilm uh, whole uh, microfilm copies of a number of relevant 19th and 20th century newspapers and more than 22,500 books in the Armenian language. I, I found that quite incredible. Um, as well as important medieval materials in our special collections library. And uh, as I understand it, some of these uh, treasures are going to be on display tomorrow, as I, if I understood correctly, and I hope that many of you will get to see them. So let me just close by congratulating the Armenian Studies program. 
for reaching this important milestone and thanking all of you for being here tonight, but also for your continued and past support of, the, of this excellent program. So thank you. Thank you, Phil. That's great. Um, there are two women I wish were here tonight. They couldn't be for a variety of reasons. One, of course, is one of our benefactors, Luis Simon Manukian. It's hard to get her out of New York into Detroit, and Richard must know that better than anyone. But she's always been supportive uh, over the years and, and is a spirit that's with us here tonight, certainly. And the other is our president, our local president, uh, Mary Sue Coleman, who's today up in Flint uh, with the Regions at a meeting, and she sent us this message on the occasion of the 30th anniversary. It gives me tremendous pleasure to extend my warm congratulations to the Armenian Studies program on the occasion of its 30th anniversary. For three decades, the program has welcomed visiting scholars and postdoctoral fellows, hosted international conferences and symposia, explored the arts and culture of Armenia and the Armenian diaspora, and supported student travel and research in Armenia. It has served as an important source of scholarship and materials about Armenia worldwide. All of this activity has attracted students from around the globe who are poised to serve as the next generation of scholars on and in Armenia. None of this would have been possible without the vision and generosity of the Manukin family and other thoughtful donors. Today, we are well positioned to build on a strong foundation of excellence. Thank you all for your valued contributions to Michigan's Armenian Studies program. Mary Sue Coleman. One of the great distinctions of the University of Michigan, and I can say one of the burdens that we faculty bear, is that they keep bringing faculty members into the administration and making them do important jobs. Phil is a good example of that. Ara Paul was another one for many years. I'm running an institute on the side while doing everything else. And the fellow I'm going to introduce now used to be, and still is technically, a member of our department. Terence McDonald. Terry is an award-winning historian of the United States. He's the recipient of no numerous teaching awards, and he's been our dean for many years now. He's the author or editor of four books, one of them about budgets in San Francisco. Remember? I remember that book. I wanted him to call it Budgets on the Bay, but I don't think you can. I think you have a more academic title. He's interested in urban history. We miss him more directly in the department though he's a great friend. Uh, McDonald has also received prizes for his work from Social Science History Association, California Historical Society. He's been a Guggenheim Fellow, and he's widely recognized as a gifted teacher as well as scholar and administrator. And he's been a strong supporter of the Armenian Studies program. He's always willing to listen to us, to help us to move ahead, as he's had very much so in the last year as we make a transition to a new professor uh, in the Manukin chair. I welcome now Terry McDonald. Thank you, Ron. Uh, there's one uh, sad thing about the 30th anniversary, and that is that I remember Ron when he was 30 years younger, and that means I remember myself when I was 30 years younger. Uh, so we all have to contend with that uh, from time to time. Um, I'd like to begin, if I might, by simply asking us to salute two people whose work was really uh, fundamental in having this wonderful event happen. And that, of course, is uh, uh, Gerard and, and Ingrid from the Armenian Studies Center. So let's have a round of applause for our current <laughs> new professor. I, uh, as Ron has said, uh, I first met Gerard when I was the chair, uh, I was a, briefly the chair of the history department before becoming dean of the college. And Gerard had actually come out as a visitor, uh, and it was a, it was a pleasure to meet him. Uh, and I, at the time, made a note that it might be possible if he was actually willing to stay longer, that someone with his experience both in academia uh, and in the real role of diplomacy and politics would make a great leader for the program if that was possible. And I've, we've been so fortunate uh, that that worked out for him. Uh, that his wife was willing to let him come out here by himself for a while and then, and then join him later. And we've really benefited from his leadership uh, in the past five years in particular. And I just want to be sure that we recognize all the effort he's made uh, to make tonight possible, but also to 
manage the program at a time when really the sort of international visibility has to some extent reached uh, new heights. You know, the University of Michigan was ranked by the Times Higher Education Survey of the greatest universities in the world uh, as the 18th best university in the world this week. Uh, and we're proud of that. And I, uh, that means that there are, there's something like 400 universities on the list uh, and we're in the top 20 and that's, that's important for us. Now, it's worth saying and uh, repeating what Ron had said uh, that if you did the similar survey uh, of the places that are the leaders of Armenian studies, there, there might be some place in Armenia, but nowhere else will there be a place that compares with what's going on in Michigan right now. So the dreams of the founders of this program, uh, the donors, Ron and others, have been so enormously well fulfilled uh, in the last 30 years. We have gone from no study whatsoever, as Ron pointed out, a hard time even finding the materials for such a study, to two endowed chairs, to numerous postdocs, conferences, PhD students, etc. It's fair to say, especially in the last five years, that we have been basically training the next generation of specialists in Armenian studies, and that we are now known to be the most active and the most fundamental program in Armenian studies in the world, and that the other universities in the United States and the, around the world are looking to us to essentially provide them with the next generation of academic leadership for this field. It's a phenomenal story of success over 30 years. And I want to thank everyone in this room for their contribution to it. The best friends of the university are those who encourage us to be better than we are. And that includes donors, and that includes faculty, and that includes everyone who contributes to the astonishing excellence of this great university uh, and this college. Many of you in this room have been part of that, have been urging us to be better than we might have been 30 years ago. I want to assure you tonight we've done it. Uh, we will have another great anniversary 30 years from now. But the promise that began very, very early on has been overwhelmingly fulfilled. And that's because of the energy and the activity of all of you, and in particular, the many, many friends, the Manugian family and many others, who actually uh, gave us the funds, which in many ways made the difference between a relatively small program and the really significant program that you see today. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank everyone who contributed to this. I'm grateful to you for being here tonight, and it's just a great pleasure to be with you tonight. So thank you very much. Terry, you and I will be invited to that next 30th anniversary. Uh, I will be uh, 101 years old, uh, which for Armenians is sort of just past middle age. So we're, we're, ready, to, we're ready to come. One of the great pleasures of those years when Edmund and I and Alice and so forth used to go down with Ben Stoltz to meet Mr. Manukian and uh, have lunch and talk about founding the program and so forth, was the chance to talk to this incredibly distinguished uh, gentleman, uh, Alex Manukian. It was a real pleasure. Uh, and I remember asking your father once, Richard, uh, what was it that made you so successful? You came from Izmir, from Turkey, uh, you know, when things were chaotic, with very little, you came to Detroit, and you became a wealthy man, and moreover, you became this kind of uh, s s important figure in the life of Armenians all around the world as a benefactor and so forth. And how was it that you did this? Was it, was it your skills? What did you bring? Was it Armenian character? And he said, without hesitation, he said, mostly luck. <laughs> Which I've always remembered, right? Well, luck is something that isn't just there, it's also created. The man I'm going to invite now to speak, Richard Manukian, is someone who had the luck to be the son of Alex Manukian. That was your first good decision in life. But then he took that legacy of his father and he began building on it and turned Masco Corporation into one of the great uh, enterprises in the world. Now, if there's anything you know about Richard is you don't try to upstage him or don't try to tell jokes because he is a superb raconteur and, and, and a teller of anecdotes. And so I want to welcome this next generation of Manukians uh, in the person of Richard Manukian. Thank you, Ron. Uh, if you promise to be at the 60th anniversary, I'll be there also. And uh, Dean McDonald uh, was a little shy, but he didn't want to mention that without the Armenian Studies Program, the University of Michigan wouldn't have made the 18th great university. In the... uh, as we celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Armenian Studies Program, 
I remember well the motivations and values which led my parents to establish a chair at the University of Michigan. My father had a basic philosophy of bringing out the best of what his heritage could offer and present it to the younger generation and to the world. He cherished academic scholarship in Armenian studies. He believed that there were treasures in our Armenian heritage to be translated and shared with generations to come. The establishment of the two chairs in the Armenian studies at the University of Michigan was the culmination of a process which had started early on with my father, becoming one of the pioneering forces in the development of Armenian studies in North America. In the 1950s and 60s, as you heard, Armenian studies was in its infancy and mostly dependent on a few scholars who had immigrated from Middle Eastern countries. My father was very active in promoting Armenian studies scholarship, providing both leadership and resources to establish chairs or to offer relevant courses at various university campuses on both the East Coast and the West Coast. Importantly, he realized that closer to home here in Michigan, we had a world-class center of learning, ideally suited for the development of a viable Armenian studies program. Jimmy Darian and Sonia Harlan were already offering Armenian courses uh, in, at the University of Michigan campus when a younger scholar, Professor Ronald Sumi, assumed his uh, position as the first holder of the Alex Manoogian Chair for Modern History, Modern Armenian History. Uh, that was followed by another eminent scholar, Professor Kevork Bardekjian, who became the holder of the Marie Manoogian Chair for Armenian Language and Literature. Thus, the program garnered momentum, and the rest is history. As in everything else they did in their lives, my parents thought of the basics. In endowing the chairs in Armenian studies at this great university, they articulated three principles. First, this academic program should be founded on teaching, history, language, and literature. Second, that extracurricular activities, including lectures, conferences, and other related activities would explore wider issues, be open to the public, and complement the regular classroom curriculum. My parents did not see a conflict between scholarship and community-oriented activities. In fact, Alex Manoogian asked that an American Studies program be formally established along with the endowment of the first chair. He imagined that the fruits of the research and scholarship related to the Alex Manoogian chair in modern Armenian history would be shared with the larger community of scholars and interested laymen. The third basic objective was connected to the relations between the chairs and the Armenian Studies program here at the University of Michigan and Armenia itself. My parents believed that the teaching and programmatic activities would encourage our students to become better acquainted with Armenia and Ar Armenians, not only from the past, but from the present day as well. The University of Michigan Armenian Studies program has achieved a rare feat in producing an integrated program found nowhere else. Undergraduate teaching, pre-doctoral and post-doctoral research, and visiting scholar teaching positions, annual thematic workshops for graduate students worldwide, international conferences, and special projects. My parents would be proud and delighted with the results that have been achieved on all these fronts. In this 30, long 30-year 30 process, we have found the ideal institution through which these goals and programs could be achieved. President Shapiro was one of the believers who supported and encouraged the program. President Mary Sue Coleman and Dean Terrence McDonald have been equally supportive 
and have they have won our full confidence about the future of the two chairs. And credit is due to Professors Ronald Suni, Stephanie Platts, Kevork Bardakjian, Gerard Liberarian, excuse me, who became the architects of the success story, which had a meaningful impact on the general scholarship of Armenian studies around the world. And I'd be remiss not to recognize Edmund Azadian, who worked with my father from the very beginning to make all this happen in so many other areas as, as in addition to this program. I know that my parents, who cared about every step in the development of the program, are present with us today, watching with shining eyes the celebration of the dream which they ignited so many years ago. My sister Louise and I appreciate our family's 30-year partnership with the University of Michigan and thank all of you who have contributed to the success of the program. We eagerly look forward to many more years of productive research and scholarship in Armenian studies. Thank you. The word for me that stood out in Richard's speech was partner. And I consider, we consider all of you partners because nothing works with a professor here or a small group of students, but all of us working together. And this has been really a wonderful odyssey that we've, we've engaged in. If you think what's gone on in the last years, that really the creation of a body of literature that didn't exist, uh, the training of new generation of scholars, and we're going on with that. Uh, the moving ahead on discussions uh, of the genocide, the development of diaspora studies. None of this existed. Uh, Mr. Manukian, Mrs. Manukian, the Manukian family uh, had a vision, but they couldn't possibly have seen into the future. None of us could have seen where we are today. And we're here, thankly, uh, frankly, thankfully, because of all of you. So thank you so much. Enjoy the evening. Three principles. First, this academic program should be founded on teaching, history, language, and literature. Second, that extracurricular activities, including lectures, conferences, and other related activities, would explore wider issues, be open to the public, and complement the regular classroom curriculum. My parents did not see a conflict between scholarship and community-oriented activities. In fact, Alex Manugian asked that an American Studies program be formally established along with the endowment of the first chair. He imagined that the fruits of the research and scholarship related to the Alex Manugian chair in modern Armenian history would be shared with the larger community of scholars and interested laymen. The third basic objective was connected to the relations between the chairs and the Armenian Studies Program here at the University of Michigan and Armenia itself. My parents believed that the teaching and programmatic activities would encourage our students to become better acquainted with Armenia and Ar Armenians not only from the past but from the present day as well. The University of Michigan Armenian Studies program has achieved a rare feat in producing an integrated program found nowhere else. Undergraduate teaching, pre-doctoral and post-doctoral research, and visiting scholar teaching positions, annual thematic workshops for graduate students worldwide, international conferences, and special projects. My parents would be proud and delighted with the results that have been achieved on all these fronts. In this 30, long 30-year 30 process, we have found the ideal institution through which these goals and programs could be achieved. President Shapiro was one of the believers who supported and encouraged the program. President Mary Sue Coleman and Dean Terrence McDonald have been equally supportive and have they have won our full confidence about the future of the two chairs. And credit is due to Professors Ronald Suni, Stephanie Platts, 
Kevork Bardakjian, Gerard Liberarian, excuse me, who became the architects of the success story, which had a meaningful impact on the general scholarship of Armenian studies around the world. And I'd be remiss not to recognize Edmund Azadian, who worked with my father from the very beginning to make all this happen in so many other areas as, as in addition to this program. I know that my parents, who cared about every step in the development of the program, are present with us today, watching with shining eyes the celebration of the dream which they ignited so many years ago. My sister Louise and I appreciate our family's 30-year partnership with the University of Michigan and thank all of you who have contributed to the success of the program. We eagerly look forward to many more years of productive research and scholarship in Armenian studies. Thank you. The word for me that stood out in Richard's speech was partner. And I consider, we consider all of you partners because nothing works with a professor here or a small group of students, but all of us working together. And this has been really a wonderful odyssey that we've, we've engaged in. If you think what's gone on in the last years, that really the creation of a body of literature that didn't exist, uh, the training of new generation of scholars, and we're going on with that. Uh, the moving ahead on discussions uh, of the genocide, the development of diaspora studies. None of this existed. Uh, Mr. Manukian, Mrs. Manukian, the Manukian family uh, had a vision, but they couldn't possibly have seen into the future. None of us could have seen where we are today. And we're here, thankfully, uh, frankly, thankfully, because of all of you. So thank you so much. Enjoy the evening. Thank you.